San Diego, the undisputed craft beer capital of America, a culture inspired by the city's laid-back vibes and adventurous spirit. Join journalist and beer enthusiast Vince Meehan as we tour the most innovative local breweries, hear from their founders, and of course, taste some brews. These are the people who made San Diego a beer mecca. This is SD Craft Masters. Okay, it's Vince Meehan with another episode of SD Craft Masters. Today we were down here, East Lake at Chula Vista Brewery. I'm here with Tim Parker. How's it going? It's going pretty good, Vince. Thank okay, you. so tell me all about the, the brewery here. All right, so uh, today you're at Chula Vista Brewery of East Lake, so I own two locations. Yes. Uh, we first opened five years ago at the uh, original brewery that's down on Third Avenue. Uh, opened that up while I was still active duty military. So uh -huh. I did search and rescue in the Navy uh, about my 15 year mark. You know, I was looking at retirement at 20 years. So I was like, you know, I want to do something I enjoy. You know, I enjoy making beers. So I started, you know, looking into opening up a brewery, realized there was no brewery in my neighborhood in Chula Vista. So uh -huh. uh, we was actually the first brewery to open up downtown uh, Chula really? Vista. So. Yeah, if you paid close attention, we, we was the first ones to start that whole, um, you know, whatever. Now you got three punks right. and everybody right. down there now. So you guys are the OGs down there. Right, we are the OGs. So um, it only been five years, but that's how much it changed in five years. Five years, yeah, that's, it's dramatic what's going on down there. So you said you like to brew beer. Where did that all come from? Well, it just came from, you know, uh, being in the Navy, traveling the world, having good beer from all over the world. Oh, um, coming home, then I'm coming home to San Diego and, you know, well, you'll leave for 10 months, sometimes longer, and you'll come home and, you know, you got, 10 new, beer. <laughs> right, you got like 10 new breweries, you know, and, and they all was great. So, and, and just traveling to San Diego and having great beer, just fell in love with it. Yeah. And so tell me about this location here. This is kind of the flagship now. All sorts of stuff goes on here. You got food, you got live music, all sorts of things happening. Oh, we got a lot of things going over here. So uh, obviously it's much bigger than my original location. Uh, the, the brew house is bigger, the, you know, hey, just the seating is much, a lot, lot more people. We can hold up to 300 people here versus 80. Um, and we have live entertainment. So we have uh, DJs, bands, uh, we hold events here, so we have all type of events. We got, you can hold private events upstairs. Got the VIP, VIP, VIP section up section. there, I saw that, it's looking <laughs> exactly. good. You got so, a, a keg of your own up there, you don't have to mess around, you just. Exactly, so we got a lot going on over here that we can't really do at my my original location. And so this is kind of what I've noticed about a lot of the, the breweries, and especially down here in the South Bay, they're kind of a, a destination. People come here and they can hang out because they can, be a part of the neighborhood. They can have some beer, they have some food, listen to some music, it all happens right here. Exactly, so we, we definitely try to be a neighborhood brewery um, and we cater to our neighborhood. So like our best selling beers is not even IPAs, it's active Blondel. I'm Lodita. glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the Wadita. So yeah. uh, we have to push out our Blondel like crazy. So, I mean, we just we just focus on our neighborhood. We get back to our neighborhood. Uh, we do a lot of fundraising specifically for our neighborhood. Nice. Um, we actually, I have a lot of like people who run it for council members and, huh? and the mayors. Come on they down all here. come down here and meet just to meet the customers and talk to them. So this is almost kind of like the unofficial city hall in a weird way, huh? Yeah, it's pretty weird, yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> you know, I really wanted to talk about this here, the, uh, the uh, the what Warplanes? You, the Warplanes, yeah, what's that all about? Uh, so this was actually the first beer we made a, a part of our War Series, it was one of four. Mm -hmm. So Warplanes is actually a group of um, military friends of mine. They started their own uh, wood uh, company huh? where they make, um, they make surfboards, they make all types of things out of wood. So, okay. uh, but one of the main things they sell is wood surfboards, uh, custom wood surfboards. So, they asked me to make a beer for them and then so we made this beer uh for them uh just kind of advertised them so we got they 
a uh, Instagram where you can find them and you'll be able to see all the woodwork that they do. Uh, people fell in love with the beer. Yeah. So it was supposed to be a one-time thing. It became kind of a house beer. Uh -huh. um, and they like it, we like it. So we just keeping it going. And, and it's also trying to support them and help grow their business, bring awareness to other military uh, business, business that's out there. That's something I've seen a lot in the beer community where they're actually supporting other businesses, kind of keep it all together. I love the artwork. That's a Navy plane right there. That, that is true. Classic, <laughs> happy Boeing pin. So this, and also this location, I think I've seen it a lot on the news. And the, the reason that we came here in the first place, I saw a beautiful commercial on TV. I think there was a drone flying around, some good footage and everything. But this is kind of like a place where the big game is on TV, uh, baseball, whatever it is. Little right. League, World Series, that's people gravitate to here. Right? Exactly, people gravitate to here. Uh, we got like a surround sound system, so we can kind of make you feel like you're All in the game. All the TVs are right. right. <laughs> TVs everywhere. Yeah. Uh, we actually got a, uh, we have a local um, person that's actually looking to be dropped in the NFL, so we got a draft party coming up for him. I heard about that. So yeah. local boy is getting drafted to the NFL. When is that? Uh, he's gonna have a draft party on the third, I believe, but yeah. he's gonna be here for the draft what, the day he expected to be drafted as well. So Does he know where he's going yet? Uh, I, I have no idea if okay. he knows where well, he's going <laughs> Yeah, it Clearly it wasn't the first round, but uh, he's looking to be drafted next. Either way, it's a big deal. Right, it's big. a big deal, so we're going to throw a party for him. So. Okay, cool. Well, hey, it was great talking to you. This guy's got to take a flight out to, where are you going, Minneapolis? <laughs> Minneapolis, we got the uh, Craft Beer Conference and the ah. World Beer Cup, so I'm actually sitting on one of the panels with Sam Adams. Uh, nice. So I get to have drinks and talk, talk with, you know, Jim Cook and Jennifer, the uh, head brewer of Utopia. Cool. And uh, then after that, you know, I just kind of do the conference thing. <laughs> All right, well, that sounds like a lot of fun. You have a great time out there. And we are down here at Chula Vista Brewery. We're going to do a little bit of tasting with Nacho, your, uh, your brewer. Yeah. So yeah, Nacho's my head brewer. He's uh, um, actually a big brewer. He came from Peace Support. I'll let you tell him his yeah. backstory. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's he's a he's a, one of the big brewers in the San Diego scene. So okay, well, thank you so much, and thank you for supporting the community and All your right. service. All right, thank you, Vince, and I appreciate you having me. And we're on to our next segment. We'll be tasting some of his fantastic beers. All right, thank you. All right, Vince Meehan back with SD Craft Masters. We were down here in East Lake at Chula Vista Brewery with the head brewer. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Ignacio Cervantes, uh, Nacho for short. Nacho. So this guy's working hard. We literally had to drag him out of the tanks. I saw him scraping all the, what's the sediment at the bottom? It's the, it's the, the grain. The grain, yes. and basically that gets repurposed and fed to livestock. Yeah, we uh, have a local farmer comes and picks it up. Uh, shout out to Tony. Tony. Thanks for picking up our grain. But uh, yeah, he has a farm. He feeds it to all his livestock, cattle, pigs, chickens. So you're keeping it green. Yes. It helps you. You don't have to dispose of it. It goes to a good cause. Yes. So we're really green down here in Chula Vista. Go ahead and tell me a little bit about your history as far as being a brewmaster. I, I started, I've uh, been brewing about 12 years now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I started with the Pizza Port. Everybody uh, was at Pizza Port. Yes, right? I started working there back in 2004. Uh, worked through the the kitchen staff, the bar the bar staff. Uh, eventually, um, got introduced to ca craft beer by working there. Mm -hmm. I really didn't uh, wasn't really aware of it. Really, to be honest, at the time, till I started working there, I saw that. Uh, I noticed how popular they were, all the different beers they had. Uh, when I just started working there, they had just gotten back from a, a big uh, beer festival, the Grim, the Grim American Beer Festival in Denver. Huh? And they came back with uh, lots of medals. And they were like, the whole company was happy. Uh, it was a big buzz. So kind of got introduced that way. Uh, after a year or two um, working there, the, I started helping out brewer at the time he needed assistance mm -hmm. with random jobs in, in the brew house so i kind of like started helping him out when i was there uh eventually a spot opened up they needed someone to come help out and i jumped on board on the brewing side nice so for everybody out there pizza port is a local pizza place here in san diego the most famous one being in ocean beach 
they started making their own beer, I'm gonna say like 20 years ago. I mean, they were like one of the first ones to do it. And so many head brewers have come out of there. Nacho right here, he didn't even know how to make beer. He just goes there and starts working, you know, yeah, and next thing you know, here he is at Chula Vista. Yeah, I call it the school of pizza port. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, university. So, you know, if anybody's out there and they want to be a head brewer, maybe just go get a job at pizza port and you get all the training on the spot and then end up being a head brewer like Nacho here. Yeah, I definitely went, uh, it's, a, it's a good route to take if you're trying to uh, inspire to be a brewer here in town. All right. You've got a couple of beers here. We're going light to dark. What do you got for us first? Uh, so this is our brand new uh, West Coast IPA. West it's Coast IPA. Chela Vista, Chela Vista IPA. Chela is a, a term we use in Mexico for a beer. Really? Like, yeah, we'll say like, give me a Chela. Really? You know, like, it's kind of like saying, pass me a cold one. You heard it here. Yeah, so. Chela. We, so we play, we play with those words with the name of the brewery. Uh, just put it on draft a week ago. Uh, very uh, light, crisp mouthfeel. Very uh, dry, hoppy, crisp. It doesn't uh, have the. Uh, it doesn't really have like the in your face. No, I was uh, trying. IP. I was trying to be careful. I was trying to make a little bit. Uh, not cut back on the the bittering hops. Uh -huh. That like intense flavor you could get it like on your palate. Uh -huh. So you might you probably pick them up more at the back end when you take a sip. Uh, there's a lot of uh, grapefruit, citrus. I get some uh, some like peach in there. Some like you know colstone type fruits. Okay, flavors let's, in there. Let's see what's going on here. Mm. Wow, for an IPA, that's a lot of malt yeah. in there. I like that. Yeah, it's uh, kind of played around with the malt. There's some uh, wheat wheat malt there for the for the head head retention. Uh, some Pilsner with two row and uh, some Dexter malts. So yeah, just kind of like trying to make it nice, easy drinking beer. Yeah, I like this a lot because it is an IPA, but you're right, it's easy drinking. We live here in Southern California. You're outside, you're at the picnic, you're at the ball game, whatever. You want a light, refreshing beer. It's not oily, it's not in your face, it's not dank. It's got a really nice uh, flavor profile to it, very well balanced. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. I'm very happy how it turned out. Sometimes you don't find out for sure until it's done, right? Well, that's what I hear the, a lot of the beer makers say. They can have what in their mind yeah. is supposed to happen. And then you've got these big tanks, you got a whole lot of beer finally tasting to go, oh, I could have used a little bit extra whatever. Yeah. So it may take you a couple of runs before you zero it in. Yeah, I mean, there's still a few tweaks I want to do to it. I was going to uh, ask you overall, if this is zeroed in yet, but you, you, a couple more tweaks? Yeah, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, uh, they're definitely in my head, but I'm always like my biggest critic. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I like the feedback I'm getting from the customers here. It's been really uh, taken, you know, people are really taking a liking to it. So yeah, know, maybe yeah. I'll leave it alone. Well, I, yeah. you know, who knows, but you gotta, um, you gotta listen to your customers too, right? I'm getting, I'm getting the tropicals in there. Yeah. This is going to sound weird. Maybe I'm weird. At the finish, I get a little bit of Fruit Loops. Okay. Does that sound right or am I crazy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, there's definitely uh, some hops in there that give out some, uh, like a lot of uh, like stone fruit type okay. characteristics to the, to the beer. So it's stone fruit, but it's yeah. actually, I, get like a lot I call of, it yeah. Fruit Loops. <laughs> I, I get that and I get a lot of grapefruit when I'm drinking it. Yeah, That's and I'm getting. it reminds me of uh, Fall Brewing has a, uh, what do they call it? Magically delicious, I think. Reminds me a lot of that. Maybe it's the same hot profile and all that. Maybe, could be. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we have a dark beer here. All right, so this is our, uh, this is called Wakey Wakey. Wakey Wakey. Yeah, it's our uh, coffee milk stout. Really, okay. So there's actually a uh, lactose sugar in here. So I don't know if you could drink any dairy products, but. Oh, don't worry about that. All right. What I was gonna say is I hear that a lot, milk stout, right. milkshake, whatever. And I thought to myself, well, there can't be milk in there. And then I started talking to different brewers. It's lactose, right? So it's powdered. It's a powder, sugar. So it's not really sugar. milk, but it's no. kind of giving yeah, you that same exactly. kind of. Exactly. So it, it, it gives you some sweetness and a smoothness to the to the mouthfeel. Uh -huh. That's really what it adds to it. Um, and then we use, uh, actually, 
co like coffee roaster from Oceanside called Libra Coffee. Uh -huh. And we use, uh, I believe it was a Ethiopian and a Guatemalan blend. Really? Yeah, so very, uh, most, a lot of Central American type of coffees have a lot of that like chocolatey yeah. kind of bitterness to it. And a lot of the African um, coffee, spe specifically Ethiopian, you get a lot of like berry, blueberry flavors in it. At least I do Okay. when I have those, those type of coffees. And that's kind of like the blend we wanted with the beer. And it's also poured on nitro. So that's why they call it Wakey Wakey. Yeah. He's got a bunch of coffee in there. Yes. Really nice smell. And if you're a coffee lover, you're gonna love this. Ooh, boy. Wow. That's a mouthful. <laughs> yes. It's really rich. It's very creamy. That's the lactose in there. Um, definitely a high roasted uh, flavor. So, you know, if you like dark beer, then you're gonna like this. If you don't like dark beer, then you know what can I tell you? Yeah, we actually got the grounds whole when he when we got picked them up, and we actually uh, grind them here at the brew house the day of of the of when we actually used them. Yeah, if you like Guinness, this kind of reminds me of the Guinness old school Guinness. Yeah. You would definitely like it. It's it's roasted. It's not bitter. It's got that creaminess to it, and uh, wakes you up in the morning. Yeah, just a lot stronger than Guinness. <laughs> yeah, I believe Guinness uh, four and a half percent beer this is at seven three seven three yeah doesn't taste like, like it, it will help <laughs> it could wake you up or put you to sleep one or the other wow yeah so you are as a brewmaster got your finger on the pulse of everything happening I, you probably get out there to the beer festivals and go visit with different people right what kind of a trend do you see happening in the next six months uh future um, I don't know if it's just because I'm taking the, I'm going that route with what I'm drinking lately, uh -huh. but I've kind of noticed it working here and just going around a few breweries. I feel like a lot of um, English style of beers really? are coming back a little bit, okay. like your uh, like your English Browns, your Irish Reds. Really? Those okay. type of beers are uh, making a little bit of comeback. Um, the last year or two, or maybe a little longer than that, uh, your lighter beers like the Lagers, the Pilsners, all those German. Uh, Czech style beers have like, you know, there's a big, been a big demand for those. Yeah. But uh, I mean, the West Coast hazy IPAs still, there's the high, <laughs> high demand for those. So we still got to like, I know, heard somebody at a, those aren't going away. Yeah. I, well, think. I, I interviewed a guy from St. Archer, God rest their souls. <laughs> and he was telling me the same thing is like IPA is here forever. He said IPA is the rock and roll of beer it's never gonna die no it's always gonna I mean, be here i mean i think the the doubles the triples those my like come and go yeah you know like or the set, set even the session ones but like the the straightforward around six to seven percent ipa um yeah i think that's gonna that's a staple especially in this town so here at sd craft masters we're always trying to keep a finger on the pulse of trends here in san diego and that's what we've heard uh, time after time is beer has kind of come full circle. It's going back to the traditionals, coming back to uh, Pilsners, lagers, stuff like that. Even um, Mexican lagers, you know, the Dos Equis yes. style, Coronas. And um, so that's kind of like where we're heading right now. And this man, hardest working man in Chula Vista, we had to pull him out, but he's got to go back in there. He's got yeah. brute. The things are overflowing right now. You got to get back in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I think we're, yeah, we're, you got me at a good time right now. I don't see yeah. any steam, so that's a not, good thing. Not yet. But yeah, thanks, we're, we're, yeah, thanks thank for you. taking time out to talk with us thank here. You. And this has been another great episode of SD Craft Masters down here in Chula Vista. This place is not only a brewery, you got food, you got live music, you got DJs, you got TV, you got sports, you got everything going on. It's the unofficial city hall of Chula Vista. Yeah. And we're proud to be here, and we'll see you next time. Boop.